your God will be my God. And your people will be my people. And Naomi said, please, sir, don't follow me. But he said, I will follow you. With rule, and the end, the Bible said he ended up marrying uh, Naomi's brother called Boaz. And then he joined the lineage of David. This is a good relationship. Praise God. Let's look at David. David chose Jonathan as a friend. And Jonathan played a key role in David's life when God said that David was going to be the next king and remove uh, the kingship of uh, Saul. When he needed anything, anytime David needed something, Jonathan was there. Jonathan was on the side of David more than on the side of his grandfather, Saul. This is the kind of friendship that you have. Praise God. Apostle Paul was attached to Barnabas. The apostles in Antioch never accepted Paul because Paul was a murderer. Paul was incarcerating the uh, Christian into prison. But when God laid his hand upon him, all right, on the way to Damascus, as you all know the story, and God took him, Paul was one of the most powerful uh, apostles that God chose. But apostles in Antioch did not want to accept him. It was the friendship of Barnabas. Barnabas is the one who held the hand of Paul and introduced him to the rest of the apostles because they were afraid of Paul. And Paul was accepted. Who is your friend? Who advises you in your marriage? Who advises you in your business? Who is turning you away from good life? Who is talking to you about your relationship in business? The word of God tells us, do not be deceived. Evil company, evil association, evil fellowship, it corrupts. Or in other words, it destroys good character. Why character? Character is very important. Character is what takes you to heaven. Not power. Not your beauty. It is not a miracle that you are performing in the church. It's not a word of knowledge that I prophesy to people. It's not just laying hands. But do character. People are laying hands. A lot of miracles are happening. Whether it's from God or not it's from God. That is not what is going to take us to heaven. What takes us to heaven is our heart. It's our character. Character is having a good heart. Character is your manners. Your manners, all right? That touches God. It is character that takes us to heaven. Not power and not miracles and not prophecy. The wisest man or the wisest king who has ever lived called Solomon gave one advice in the book of Proverbs chapter 22 verse 1. Notice what he said. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. That is the maker of them all. Let me say it again. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. The Bible did not say that a, a good prophecy or the miracles or your beauty, but it says a good name. What is in the name? Your name determines your character. People will know you by your character. Character is something that you cannot hide. And wherever you go in life, you take yourself with you, with a character. In marriage, character. In business, association is character. People will get to know the way you are, who you are, by your character. Praise God. If in relationship is character, some friends have already parted from you, or you have already parted from your friend. Why? Because of the way they lie, they never speak the truth, they are very deceptive. All these are so important. That is why we have to be very careful who we get ourselves attached to or who we associate ourselves with. Character is very, very important. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said something. Ye shall know them by their fruit. The word fruit means a character. Praise God. But let's talk about something here. In the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. The Bible say that uh, the, the Bible mentioned nine fruits of the Spirit. Nine fruits of the Spirit, which begins with love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, 
goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And of such there is no law. Now, Paul is telling us here that this nine fruit, which is given by the Holy Spirit, the first one that is very, very important is love. Praise God. The word of God again tells us that he who walks with wise men will be wise, but the company of fools will be destroyed. Proverbs 13, 20. Anytime you are walking with a wise man, obviously you become wise. And if you walk with people who are fools, you become um, a fool. So character is very, very important. The Bible talks about the fruits of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is for is to develop God's kind of character. It is character that takes us to heaven, not power. That's why the Apostle Paul, when he was uh, talking to the people of Corinth, he said, I speak with tongues of men and with angels, but if I don't have love, I become like what? I become like a brass and like a tinkling symbol. One of the characters that he used was love. Love is very, very important. Wherever you go in life, you're looking for love. In church, you're looking for love. In marriage, the first thing is love. In friendship, what you look for is love. Not hatred. So, character is very, very important. If you attach yourself to white people, you will obviously become wise. But if you hang around fool, you will be a fool. Now, let's examine Abraham's association with his nephew. Let's turn to the book of Genesis 13. Let's look at verse 7. And there was strife, not a quarrel, there was strife between the headman of Abraham cattle and the headman of Lot's cattle, and the Canaanites and the Perizzites live in the land. Now, Lot associated himself, or Lot went with Abraham, as I said in the very uh, inception. But God has blessed Abraham so much that the blessing has affected one of his relatives by the name Lot. Lot was also blessed, but it got to a point that there was contention between both. Lot's employees engaged in a fierce argument with Abraham's employees. And it was an ongoing issue every now and then, every now and then, every now and then. The Bible said, how can two walk together? Except that they are in agreement. The problem did not start from Abraham. It started from Lot. He was a greedy man. He never respected his uncle. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, Abraham said to Lot, Please, let there be no strife between you and me. We are a family. Let there be no strife between you, my husband, and your husband. Hallelujah. For we are a family. Hallelujah. And one day... Abraham said to Allah, My nephew, don't let us fight or argue over what God has blessed us with. Because we are family. The Bible said that blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called the children of God. Abraham said, It's not the whole land before you. Why don't you take to the right and I take to the left? Or you take to the left and I take to the right. So let's go our own separate way. And Abraham realized that his nephew's attachment, if he's not careful, it could cost him his relationship with God and destroy his destiny. So he made a decision. Verse 9, he said, uh, It's not a whole line before you. Please, separate from me. If you have taken to the left, then I will go to the right. Abraham made a decision. The Bible said, if one leg offends you, cut it off. We need to cut off people who are a pain or have become a cancer in our life. A cancer in your body. A cancer in your marriage. A cancer in your ministry. A cancer in everything that you do. People who are dominating your life. Dominating things that could have been a blessing to you. Bad advice. Bad friends. Bad association, and it should not be so. Notice what the Bible says. If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peacefully with all men. 
Abraham realized that if he does not make a decision and depart from his nephew, even though they were relatives, that could end him and cost him his God-given assignment. All this argument and contention that was going on, you could not hear God saying anything. He didn't come in there. The same thing happened to Abraham when Sarah told Abraham, now you can have uh, that Egyptian woman and then he can have a baby for it. God never said anything. God has already spoken one. He don't talk two or three times and warn you. So Abraham realized that if he does not allow or depart from his nephew, he's going to be in trouble. You may be lonely. You may be lonely for a few times. Your friend may be gone. The telephone may not ring. All right. You may be spending the night all by yourself, but it paid a dividend. If you allow that friend to go, if you allow that bad relationship that is giving you headache, that is stressing you out, that is causing strife in your life, you're gonna have to breathe and let it go. It will be better for that person to go. It will be better for you to depart from that person. So that your life can move on. So that you can have good success in life. Hallelujah. 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 And God will bring you new friends. He will bring you a new relationship. And God will give you new purpose. And then your old purpose will be gone. And then you will have a new assignment from God. God is a faithful God. Nothing is impossible to God. Praise God. Notice what 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12 says, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are profitable. Not every door that opens in your life that you have to go through. Not everyone that comes in your life that you might want to keep them. Jesus had friends. Mary was a friend and a sister. Lazarus was their friend. Of course he had friends. There's nothing wrong. They were there for Jesus. They ministered to Jesus. They supported Jesus' ministry. It was a good relationship. The Bible says again, all things are lawful. All things are helpful, in other words, for me. But all things edify not. Not everybody that comes into your life will edify you, will help you, will build you up. We have some friends that are jealous of you. They just want to come into your life and discourage you and take you from good cause. At the end of it all, there was an eventual separation between Lot and Abraham. Look at Genesis 13 verse 10. And Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan, all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed a Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. As you go towards Zohar. Then Lot showed for himself all the plains of Jordan. And Lot journeyed is, and they separated from each other. Lot thought that he was a smarter and a, 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 a wise man. Lot showed the best of the land. Lot showed the fat part of the land. Abraham sat back and Lot made a choice. Abraham did not make a trip first. He said, now look, the whole land, this is what God has blessed us with. I want you to select. I want you to choose. So, Lord showed prayer. You see, if something belongs to you, if God blesses you, nobody can take the blessing from you. Hallelujah. And Abraham was not moved. Abraham was not upset. Abraham waited for Lord to choose the best part of the land. And when Lord chose, he left. And Abraham was at peace. Lot showed, the Bible said, the plains of Jordan and the city of Jordan, which linked to Sodom and Gomorrah. Where he chose, it was close to Sodom and Gomorrah. And all of you know that Sodom and Gomorrah was an abomination to God. Evil things were going in over there. Lot didn't have any clue. Lord did not know anything about Sodom and Gomorrah. That is the path that he chose. That is the path of the land.
that he thought it would be good for him. Abraham allowed him to have it. 